let me first start with um, with John. John, I think I'd like you to make an opening statement on where you see fintech in Nigeria in the past few years that we've known it, and where you predict that we'll take it to in 2018. Um, fintech past and into the future, let me just say, uh, at least now we have an idea of what fintech is. A few years back, it was a buzzword and a lot of interpretation. There was a lot of scare in the industry. When you hear the word fintech, you just assume some small people coming to either steal some money or speak in a language you don't understand. Incidentally, I remember we made a presentation to a state government on payroll and electronic payments. And um, at the end of the presentation, he talked to the next per person next to him, whispered something, and then now said, oh, payroll, we can do that one, I understand. But this one that you say money will leave our account and go to people's account, no, that one is yahoo yahoo. We cannot do it. So, of course, everybody in the industry now understands that these things can happen. So I see that as a past. Going into the future, I see a lot of innovative solutions. I see a lot more collaboration. Again, before now, there was a lot of scare between players in the industry. But going into the future, people now understand that there are different segments where you can specialize, but that your value gets higher if you can connect with other players in the value chain. You'll be able to deliver, uh, um, have a higher breakthrough with that. There is always this perception that the fintechs have come to displace this 2G banking system. Uh, in other words, the banks are not innovating as quickly and as deeply as they should, and it's very likely that the fintechs will replace the banks. Is this the case? And if so, how long is it going to take to happen? I don't think um, fintechs represent a threat to the banking system either or. I think banks will see more of what they do and the way that banking is done will become more technology-based rather than the traditional banking halls, um, brick and mortar, where you have to walk into an institution. Um, banks that are not competitive in that environment then do stand a risk in the future. But I think the good thing also is that fintech and the disruption that it brings also gives new companies the opportunity to participate in that value chain for the movement of capital. And I, so I think that's what we're saying, is you will see giants emerge who come at it from a very, a very different angle, not the traditional banking angle, and start playing quite a significant role and capturing some of the value um, that is associated or previously was derived by banks for the management and movement of capital. So that, that's really uh, my take on fintech and banking. The, the post office used to be a very central part of our lives. I remember I had a post office savings account. Apart from buying stamps and putting on letters, there was always something to take you to the post office. And before now, we had something called Thomas Cook. I remember in my early days of working, if you're going to travel, you go and buy something called Thomas Cook checks. And today, I don't remember the last time I went to the post office, and neither the last time I bought a Thomas Cook check. People are beginning to mute the fact that banks may eventually go the way of post office uh, or Thomas Cook, because they are not just innovating to give the customer a frictionless experience with their relationship with the banks. Does this ring true, or do you see it differently? None of these bodies are going away. 
It's a matter of engaging technology. We as tech providers, we are continually looking at all the processes and say, what do we need to automate? And then try to push it and educate the user community on how to use it. For example, we talk about banking industry. A few years back, nobody wants to do any transfer with funds. Like Mr. Obaro said earlier, he said, payroll system, then disbursement of funds. Sounds like 419. Yeah, but today, everybody would like to have it. So when you talk about the postal, postal agency, we will, it, it, uh, will basically enhance their processes. I don't think they're going away because people could still go to the post office to pay for their transactions. It's a matter of invoicing, a central billing system, for example, where the bills are posted in a bill presentment environment, and in turn, you pay for the convenience of a home. The post office could have hand and such a solution. So it's a matter of solutions. We at FinTech, or providers of FinTech technologies, have, have to engage these in several sectors, be it a bank, be it a postal agency, so that they can adopt these technologies to make them more viable. But if they stay in the old system, then they will go away. If not, they are very, very viable, the solution here.